Good day everyone. We have on the table of trouble a induction hob. It's a Viesta, Viva Viesta quad induction cooker hob. It got blown up by a friend's wife and she's cooking a particularly difficult bloater so yeah apparently what's happening is that uh, you touch here touchy here and it does things and you select the plate and you go on or time or whatever and then it cooks by the magic of induction you see just to say induction a bit scratched actually actually our pens have been scratching it it's about 18 months two years old as i understand it and um, what happens is when you turn it on, I'm not sure what you did to turn it on, but I've seen it in action. This ring, it fires up. You can hear a fan and um, when you fire it up, but this ring just does not do any cooking. It's not working at all. The other three are fine, just that one. And I've, I've just had the lid off it. And there's a, if you look around the side, you can see a bunch of screws all down here. There's screws, screw, screw and the screws have all been taken out so I should be able to lift the lid off single-handed do you think single-handedly and then put that down and reveal what is within and here we have the uh, if you've never seen inside one of these before I've repaired them before they're quite interesting uh, nice big copper coils obviously that's where the uh, EM field is created which is going to interact with the correct type of saucepan and heat your food up and if I zoom in on it you can see it's made of braided twisted uh, lacquer coated enameled copper wire actually it looks a lot more golden in this light than it looks to you on the, on the, on the monitor all right, but we can get a close up of that later. And then on top of each one of these, you've got thermistor. So they're real squishy rubber top hat. You can see silicon rubber filled with uh, heat sink compound, titanium dioxide, uh, silicone compound with a thermistor which pushes up against the underside of the glass, presumably just to monitor that the pan is not getting red hot or there's something totally outrageous happening like a red hot empty pan on top in which case it will throttle back the power I should think now what we've got here is obviously mains input we've got a logic control board which comes down to this control panel with the touch sensors one ring sprung loaded touch sensors which push up against the underside of the glass and some, uh, some seven segment LED displays and so on. So that's not really of interest. Since the three, the other three do actually work, which is these three, that one, that one, that one, that, one, that work, they work. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that this is okay. Uh, this is the logic control board, microprocessor, power supply. Relays by the look of it, choke, filter, input, you know, the usual switch mode power supply for DC logic control circuitry. Can't see any brown out or burnt out bits and pieces on there, any evidence of kind of electrical trauma. So, my guess is that there's something wrong with this, this ring, this controller under here or this coil, probably the controller. So without further ado, let's just um, whip that off and uh, we'll take it over the other side and have a damn good look at her underneath the, uh, the magnifier. So stand by, hold on. All right, let's take her apart, see what's happening. Usually these work on a kind of a half bridge type circuit with IGBTs present. Okay, so we've got 
a thermistor and there's two sensors in there actually there's a thermistor and something else in there because there's uh, two sets of wires you can see I'm not sure what oh, I feel a bit flimsy you can just feel, see the actual thermistor wobbling about so it's just resting on the top all uh, right so let's, uh, let's take this off disconnect the power to the coil try and save the fasteners <coughs> that one have to wait any more for any more okay so we've got this uh, umbilical control cable coming from over here which is soldered on there onto a header so that's a cable it's only unplugs at this end so let's unplug it from the uh, logic controller there's a tie wrap which needs to be cut just there there we are I'm sure to lift that up Right, for the moment I'm going to assume this coil is okay, it looks alright, I can't see any burning or anything on it. I will measure the inductance of it if I can't find anything wrong with that, because I've obviously got these and they're all, I think they're all the same size, yeah, they're all the same power and size. Well, look at it. Oh look, there's a fan. So we've got four, four cooling fans and four modules I think, and two, three, four, and just the controller, so presumably these are all the same power board. They certainly can't see any number on it at the moment. This is now IH power board. But let's um, up power, live, neutral, so that's the mains input power. So these seem to have their own switch mode power supply on, so they're complete. All they take from the controller, I think, is just the control signals. It's got its own, what looks like an MPS, MC. it's got what, it, what looks like its own SMPS on here and a fuse. See if the fuse is blank. I'm going to get this off. I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers on that. Come on baby. Crimp tool. No, I always walk that way. There we are. Lovely. Okay, so let's go to the side and have a closer look. Here she is, golden. All right, so what have we got? Heat sink. Uh, just run through, try to work out what all this is. It looks like it's pulled the header off there. Look, it's got the pin sticking up. The header must be in the other half of the connector still on the board. So let's just have a look. We've got a JLH20B513G1208G1 and I know I've looked for JLH chips before and I've never been able to find them. I'm guessing it's some kind of half bridge or PWM driver. It might even be specifically designed for driving these induction hob type things. You never know, do you? Cunning Chinese. I hope that's not blown because I haven't been able to find that. Bunch of transistors. If we look, uh, start at the very beginning. Good place to start. The fuse. Nothing to lose by checking the fuse. Oh, so we haven't had a catastrophic power short. That's quite a good news because if the FET had gone, the chances are that fuse would be uh, kafui. Live coming in through the fuse. Neutral coming in there. Live neutral. Two diodes to here to a positive. Ah, oh, on. Sorry. It's the live end of the fuse. That's the live end of the fuse. All right, live fuse, two diodes through to there, through to this component, which is below, below the fuse, through a fusible resistor, R6, to your reservoir capacitor, 10 microfarad, 450 volt, 450, that's quite good actually. Lovely, and what make it is, 
look it's a look at me and I'll blow up it's vented 105 degree it says it could be anything couldn't let's face it it was made in China then a switch mode power supply management chip and it's upside down swing around okay it's a Viper 12A it's basically a PWM management chip and what that's doing is via this transformer is a pulse width modulated power supply to power the low voltage DC logic this thing maybe 12 15 volts or 5 and 15 volts is there two rails probably two there's two diodes can't see anything burnt scorched or buggered can you um, yeah so this is the DC power supply to drive this so these these boards are independent drivers you just need to give them some power and then some instructions which is probably go straight into this custom chip to control the power level and then this does the monitoring and the drive and the drive to the devices under here there's one or two devices depending whether it's a half bridge or just a, <clears throat> a single ended output driver got some very nice uh, source, I mean if you can get one of these hobs and it's been blown up these caps would cost you a pretty penny because I think these are pretty high ripple current caps um, a bit wobbly though, 2 microfarad small isn't it for 275 volt AC, 400 DC or thereabouts a couple of uh, 82, 82k 82k resistors 5 microfarad, 400 volts and there's another one on the end what we got on there 0.3 microfarad 630 volts so some nice caps so if you get the chance to get an old induction hob out the skip and you like these caps that those three caps would cost you five or six quid I would have thought on their own that coil would cost you probably a couple of quid stuck down by silicone look that's just an ordinary series choke it's only got two wires on it it's just a series choke to act in conjunction with the output drive for this uh, this power. Now on these, I've seen ones with um, obviously when you're driving away, chucking your RF into the coil, the induction coil, you need to be able to monitor the the load, the peak current. So there'll be a current feedback circuit on here, and um, so that even part way through a switching cycle, it can turn off the transistor and limit the current, so it doesn't sit there blasting a load of uh, inductive power into the environment so it's probably just idles until the pan is put down and it will detect the load and it will then it will increase the drive to drive into the pan there's no sense in the thing radiating fully a because the inductance will be too low so you'll end up with uh, possibly a lot more EMC and wasting a lot of power and much higher voltages than if it was damped you know we've got a damped um, inductive circuit here so when it's damped the voltage is much lower so the pan will suppress all the nastiness that might be going on otherwise in terms of the drive when you're driving into a, just a low inductance coil so that's what I think what do you think anyway so a bunch of components have a look on the back oh look we have a shit stain. There is an evidence of an explosion of C24. C20, one of our capacitors has left the building. It's not there anymore, is it? It's gone. C24 has gone. I don't know whether R15's had a bit of trauma. This is probably, we've got a transistor there which may have had some grief. And then we've got a line going there to a link which goes to here to a capacitor which ends up around this network here going back up to the drive end of the board. So I think Oh, I don't know what I think at the moment, so if I just zoom out... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, look at that. If 
focus closer, will it? Yeah, well, look at that. It's on the look. Look at that connection. Can you see that? Bad manufacturing, boys. That's been sparking and arcing. Where is that in the circuit? Let's zoom out again. So that joint there is connected to four pins in a row. Bridge rectifier, do you think? Yeah, bridge rectifier under there. There's the bridge. Take it to the bridge. Can you see what it says? Yeah, bridge one. So you've got AC, AC, mains coming in. So the mains comes from down the board, through the fuse, through an inductor to there. Then it comes out and then you've got a slightly smoothed main supply. So that will be a plus or that will be a plus. Which one's plus on that thing? But either way, that's one of the power rails and that's one of the DC rectified mains power rails that's going to be driving into this uh, this drive circuit to drive out the uh, EM field to your pot. Now, so we got, uh, we're going back to this now, we've got minus, yeah, through the inductor to there, and then you've got the other supply rail is here, and this is the actual supply rail, this loose connection goes to there and is that a link? Uh, if you can see that in there can you? down in there can you see that? So I think probably that might be a DC shunt or a resistive shunt um, it's been getting hot. You can see it's got a piece of tape that's burnt. Can you see the charring just here? Just there, it's all charred. So that wire has been getting hot. It's right next to the bridge rectifier. Here's the RGBT, an insulated gate uh, FET probably, that's just doing the, all the donkey work driving into the coil. Only a single ended design on this one. The earlier ones usually had two, but they've obviously got a bigger or better. FET in there to uh, handle the power uh, in a semi resonant circuit, probably, hence the need for this capacitor here. Now, um, yeah, so that is a link, wire link, it's not a component. Soldering's alright on that end, and you can see that there's a fairly thick piece of tracking going sensing what they're doing I think is sensing the current by the potential that's uh, generated across that piece of uh, that link that copper link or might be iron wire or some kind of resistive wire link you know a few milliohms probably and this is all part of the sensing circuit for current feedback so this part of the circuit and that transistor would be used to the more or less the full naught volts or plus whatever the you know 360 volts or whatever it is the bridge rectified mains is going to be. So we've got a capacitor which is probably just a noise decoupling capacitor has blown completely and you can see that transistor is normally connected to the end of the capacitor but the capacitor is gone, it's been over voltage because normally it would only expect a few millivolts across here. So this is naught volts I think, so they're probably okay. This network okay, R15 might be blown. So, but this track has been on an excursion where it would normally go. We'll check the FET, the, the uh, insulated gate transistor in a moment. Just trying to work out, well, this goes up to the IC, you see the current sense line go all the way up to IC, but it is quite strongly conditioned. So the, the, um, the main question is, has this chip blown? I can cope with anything else, but if this chip up here, the uh, Mystery JLH chip has gone, 
we're going to be uh, a bit screwed I think unless I can get a replacement um, yeah so I'm going to go and get another board out and then we'll take C24 off and R15 then we'll get the um, capacitance resistance bridge and check those two components to see what values they are replace them solder this up and um, also check the fit. Let's just have a quick look at the uh, transistor, see whether that's gone or not. I think. Yeah, look, this is this is. He says turning his meter on. This has got a conformal epoxy conformal coating on it. Look, so there's no connection there on those probes. You have to rub through, give it a quick bit of frottage play before you can get it to cooperate. Is that, one making, that one's making contact now. I should be able to find the protection diode here somewhere. Okay, so there's some voltage across that one. There should be a protection diode across these two. That's the that's the gate there, isn't it? That's the gate drive circuit. So there's no short between the gate and the, uh, the, the source, but I would expect a diode there. I mean, that's reading 1.4 volts, which is a bit high. It may have been blown open circuit, but normally, in my experience, these FETs, when they go, they usually go short. And then we'll take the heat sink off and have a look underneath just to make sure. When they go, they usually um, go kapow as well, so much power floating around it usually the uh, the wafer device itself vaporizes and blows its top off so at the moment we have relatively high hopes keep your fingers crossed uh, screwdriver fuck's sake there they are I don't know why I'm fixing this, because whenever I go to their house, I just get an egg sandwich or a fish finger sandwich. I should be demanding a gourmet meal next time. Right, there's a screw. There's a bit of tape under there, look. So I'm just going to go through the tape, into the screw, and undo the fixing to the bridge rectifier. Otherwise, I'll have to unsolder it, which I don't really want to do. Let's have a look at what damage we have underneath. Okay, no no signs of any explosions or trauma on there, that's a good sign. Yep, so there's your bridge rectifier and there's your FET or your IGBT transistor. Can I see the part number through there without... No, I can't. I'm not going to bend that up um, because if I do it's going to stress the leads, I'm going to have to unsolder it and um, I think it's probably going to be okay, and if it's if it um, isn't okay, then the gate would likely have got a big voltage down the gate circuit and uh, blown up this chip. In which case we're going to be pretty powerless. So I'm going to go and whip another one off, and then we'll just check check what these values are, resolder that, and then tentatively power it up and see if it works. Well, okay, here are those two components. This is another controller I've just taken out. Notice the solder joints have been touched up by the production line. This has been added after the reflow. So they're aware of the problem. They've missed it out on that board. Now, um, yeah, so there's the capacitors blow up C24. R15-1001, that's a 1K. Confirm that with the meter. Yeah, 998 ohms. 3300, 3.3k. Three, three, yeah, no, uh, 3300, you're all shouting at me. Yeah, it's 330 ohms, 330, there's no multiplier. Sorry about that. 
and then another cap here look which if I just measure across it we'll compare it to the other one this conformal coating is a pain It's reading 1.3k ohm across there on the good board and if we just look on this board so the 1k is clearly gone the sorry the capacitor is clearly gone the 1k is that one which is reading 44 meg ohms <laughs> so that's no good uh, the 330 ohm is reading 23 meg ohm so that's open circuit so blown blown then a cap here yeah yeah so there's not much difference actually uh, so I think maybe those three are gone but they've survived the question is has this chip been destroyed now the problem, the problem is really, is that um, if you take this chip, it's actually getting some contacts on this. Because what I would normally do, if I wasn't in a hurry, I would meter about on this chip and just note down the impedances to ground and the impedance to supply rail uh, to get an idea of what a normal circuit looks like. And then meter the other one in the same way, it seems I have two assemblies which are the same. And then if there's any drastic differences in, in uh, values, then I will um, know that probably that have a look at what else is connected to the offending pins with the different impedance. But if there's a, a big difference in resistance to the supply rail or resistance to, to ground, then we know we've got this chip is blown um, and the remedial work we're going to do on the other one is not really going to help that much. But you never know, you never know. So I'm just going to stop that, pause the video, just have a quick poke around and I'll come back to you in a moment. Yeah, so I've metered to uh, the ground pin and the impedances along here look pretty much, it looks like there's a protection diode actually because when you meter between these pins and ground they reach 0 0.57 so there might be just a diode uh, shorting out any you know, erroneous voltages that come down here to ground in which case these uh, resistors here are blown out probably via the diode in circuit in there so I'm going to risk it for a biscuit so the next thing we need to find out is what the value of this capacitor over here C24 is it's not going to be much it's going to be 100 N or something isn't it so I just put the solder 9 on uh, where's my I've forgotten my uh, to bring my bridge from the office ninety one point four two nanofarad so it's a hundred nanofarad pretty small so it's only going to be like twenty volts or ten volts or sixteen volts or something or maybe a fifteen volt but it's a 0603 it's just literally just to do HF uh, blocking capacitor ninety one point three six nanofarads so it's a hundred nan basically hundred nanofarad for C24 alright so let's put that back on and then we'll just rebuild the one with just the perfectly good one we've just uh, disabled. <clears throat> now, as you know, as you're probably aware, I am a sad old man with a flux fixation. So I want to flux you up, baby, and then we'll solder you back on. A little bit of the Kingbo RMA218 lovely stuff it's like they say with coca-cola things go better with flux rebuild the one we already broke that's what I'm gonna do if I can find it use a bit of the old solder braid
There we go. That is a lovely job. My kingdom for a toothbrush. Toothbrush there. Don't use your own toothbrush, use someone else's. Wipey, wipey. Right, this is a conformally coated board. So I am just going to put some Loctite varnish top on. You can use nail varnish or whatever you like. I'm just going to reinstate the coating on these. There we are. So I've been probing around there. It also looks like blood, which is uh, very entertaining. So I'm going to put that to one side now. So we need to uh, remove both of those. R27 is 330 ohms. Let's see if that's blown or not. No, it can't. And the other one was a 1K, wasn't it? 1K. And then we have a bit of an explosion. It's actually blown the track off. That's probably me probing, I think. So what we're going to do next... Let's turn that on. You get a slightly better view, don't you? Yes, you do. Don't oh, shut up. Give her a bit of a solder wash. Now I think we'll have some flux, shall we? Yeah, when they go bang, sometimes it actually welds itself. The metal, actual copper melts, and then the metal end. It's welded itself on. There you go. So I think the whole the whole track has come off. I can gather. Or has it? Maybe it hasn't. It has. We've got a little bit of track there, so I'm gonna have to solder that on at a slightly funny angle, I think. It arced and then uh, had a bit of an arc welding moment going on. Moppy moppy. Right, let's remove the others too. What do you reckon? This is going to work. Do you think that chip has been blown or not? I'm quite hopeful that it has not, despite the um, damage going on around here. I think that line went up to B plus from ground. So suddenly we have high voltage presented on the current sensing line, which goes back to the chip. But it was connected by a 1K resistor and a 3.3k and the capacitor would have taken some of the brunt and I think there's a protection diode on the input to the actual chip so if the input diode conducted hopefully the resistor blew up before the chip was damaged the FET has no shorts on it so we're okay there, we're in the clear I think the FBT is okay, the uh, IGBT it's not an LGBGT, it's an IGBT with nothing to do with um, any kind of uh, modern um, so don't get confused, I'm not being hateful to anyone, I'm talking about IGBTs, not LGBGTs, or what are they called? I used to have, um, when I was a boy, uh, well, 18, I had an MGBGT, which was a pretty good um, sports car, actually, it was a bright yellow one, like wasp colour. And uh, yeah, lots of time ripping around the roads in Buckinghamshire with that. Uh, 0603 resistors. Yeah. 
So we want to 330. If you haven't got a resistor book, get yourself one. They are very useful. Spends you can save an awful lot of time fishing around. Um, word of advice though, if you do buy them, they're not easily available, but try and get the one percent ones if you can. But I don't think this needs to be that accurate in this instance. This is not a precision circuit. They should have a sticker on it saying this is not a piece of precision engineering. I happen to take a Miela um, hob apart because they're clearly they're much more valuable. Um, well, I'd say much more valuable. They're much more expensive. There's the 330. Much more expensive. And uh, Consequently, or subsequently, whatever. Consequently, they're probably uh, more more viable to repair. Yeah, they are 0603, but they look like they're on 0805 pads. But I think it is because um, it's wave soldered. They're not 0805, are they? Maybe they are 0805s actually. Huh. Got the wrong books out, boys. Different companion site is required. It makes it easier for me to solder it. Okay. Yeah, what was I saying? Some rubbish or other. Oh, yeah, Miela. Yeah, that's a well engineered thing. Um, but they, you know, done a lovely job on the circuit board, but they actually, when they assembled it, the FETs are a little bit bigger. Um, than the space they've allotted for them, and they're all in a row at one side, and they short on the heatsink. So it's just a pure, pure mechanical problem has let down the actual electronic design team there. So the mechanical boys should have been told off. Say, oi, you, no, do it properly. And what can you say? Best laid plans and all that always go wrong. Somebody will come along and screw with you. Somebody on production will decide they know best. I've been producing things for years. It doesn't matter if we do this, it'll be all right. Look, it's past final test. The production manager will say, "Ah, oh, yes, well, yeah, well, that's surely good. Well done, chaps. We can get this, this monthly production bonus, and uh, yeah, we'll send them out the door, and uh, that all appears to be fine." And the production engineer will say, well, "I'm a bit concerned about this because um, I don't think they're assembling it properly." And then they all join together with the QA people, and they say, "Look, it's passed the test, as designated by engineering." Therefore, um, I think you're just being overcautious, don't you? Don't you? Oh, by the way, it's your uh, your personal reviews due in two or three weeks' time, and I'd like to report you're being very cooperative and not obstructive to the production process. After all, we're all here to contribute to the well-being and profitability of the manufacturing facility. And the overall company, uh, we've got a service department, you know, and um, those chaps need work too. And that's how this crap comes out of the factory, because nobody is really awake. The engineers are all in their ivory towers, rather than down looking at possible potential problems. And if you, uh, we used to use Murphy's Law, which... Uh, the Murphy's law for the production line is that if it can be assembled the wrong way, it will be. 112, that's come out of the 1K. That's not right. Me resistors are in the wrong holes. Hmm. Resistance is futile. Is a yay goes. No go goes like a yay go goes. So you can bugger off. We don't want you. 
So we're in one there. But yeah, I've seen it time and time again. Time and time again. Are you a troubleshooter or a troublemaker, young man? Take your pick. Been to management college. I've got an MBA. Hmm. Well, you're still an ass. Right. So now we want a hundred nanofarad. I'm not putting no eight oh five hundred nanofarad in there. Ninety-three nanofarad, hundred nanofarads. Right. Get my caps out. Up here somewhere. 100 an hour of our barrel 50 volt. Just that. I worked in one multinational company in the production line as production engineering manager and I won't say who it was <laughs> my CV is online but uh, when the American owners came over privately owned company they would um, take all the detritus all the unrepaired and failed product which they couldn't get through final test off the production line and load it into articulated lorries and then park it off on a site off, off site on a, on a, in articulated trailers until the um, guys have gone back to the land of stars and stripes in which case they'd wheel it all back out again and it was my job to sort all through that and get the production yield up and to beat up the engineers to make sure that they were actually interested rather than hey we're working on the next product we we've got deadlines you know um unfortunately sometimes most of them you have to force them to be actually interested in the real world, not the fact you've been to college, you've got a degree in engineering, so you know best, you just don't. Right, that's enough of my ranting for one day. Don't get me started on the economy, that's what I say. So we've got 1K, we've got 330 ohms, all soldered back into position. Why is that so dark? That's why. Sorry about that. And then uh, we're just going to put a little bit of... I think we'll go with yellow this time. Because we can. Yellow... Just, just to put the conformal coating back on. Stop anything untoward happening in whilst it's in use. Right then. Re-engage heat sinks, reassemble. Keep your fingers crossed. Uh, that's pretty messy, isn't it actually? Pretty messed up. I'm going to put a bit more of the old white goo on there, to be honest. Looks like it's um, kind of drifted away, as though... Why would it do that? There's not much in the way of heat sink compound up this end. Can you imagine it was a bit of mincemeat? I sort of left it too long before I finished it up. Could be. Was any rice involved? Any what? Rice. Rice, not rags. Oh, rice. No, no. no. Uh, rice is the killer. That's a dangerous stuff, it's rice. Here. Yeah, it can get you every time. Nasty. No, yeah. I've had rice for a long time. Ah. Yeah. Well, I hope you're, you're right now then. Mind you, it could be that um, it could just be stomach flu because there is one going around, I think. Oh, yeah. I was going to try a bit of uh, this morning and see if I could uh, keep it in. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck. What are you squeaking about out there? Pardon? What are you squeaking about out there? I'm not, I wasn't where I was, but I'm um, I'm repairing an induction hob for someone at the moment. Oh yeah. Yeah, another neighbour that really loves, you know, another grateful neighbour. <laughs> yeah. But. Oh, an induction one. So that's what happens to them when they go wrong. You put device going. But it's got a bigger trans. It's got a transistor and a and a network around a what looks like a well, it's just a coil basically. Yeah. Underneath the glass, and there's some sensing there's circuitry. Some the the yeah, there's a, there's some sensing oh. sensing circuitry which you know um, keeps it ticking over until you present your pan, and then you know it's basically like a high power metal detector. When uh, yeah. when it detects the uh, change in the inductive circuit, it starts driving more energy into it. More power in, yeah, more power in, otherwise it'd just be radiating like a bloody transmitter. But yeah. um, they're quite good, there's a lot in it for the money. I think it was about 250 quid this hob, and there's four of these things. But yeah. the um, it's been let down by a bad solder joint. Oh, really? Yeah. That's had Yeah, well, it's just blown up one of the controllers. I'm hoping it's all right, but the, the chip that's on it looks to be completely obscure one. A Chinese, man a Chinese manufacturer. Oh, yeah. And the current shunt's just popped out now. Yeah, so, all together, a very avoidable problem if they'd have just... And I pulled the other one out, and the solder joint in question on the other one of the other boards, you know, it's four rings and four boards, on the other one, um, they'd touched it up in production. They missed it, Yeah, obviously inspection missed it, and they... Well, that's the main thing, is to rest and recuperation, as they call it. Yeah. yeah. Don't do anything. Keep your running shoes on. <laughs> and you can get to the... You can get to where you need to be in time. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, no major catastrophes, and uh, see what happens. Yeah, well, good luck, mate. May you yeah. uh, may you feel very well. Well, I don't want to the trailers. I've got another old thing in party exchange. How many do you need? Well, uh, I'll honestly use this donor thing as a uh, try and make a bug trailer out of it. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, do I you think I've got all the rubbish laying around here that. Did you fix your oil leak? No, I ain't looked at the old girl. Yeah. I got as far as buying some more brake cleaner, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, no, I, I would like to do all well enough to hopefully come round and to put it up on the hood stuff that's been cleaned and see where it's running from. Yeah, well, if it's running out that quick, it should be pretty obvious. Should be. Because if you drive it too far down the road, it's splattered everywhere, and you don't know where it came from. Ah, uh, we'll find it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's something so regular, it's relatively clean oil, you know. Mm. Not that easy to. Once it's got some dust and this, that, and the other in it. We'll just give it. We'll give it a blast with brake cleaner and see where it emerges from. Anyway, I've got a query at the door. I've got to go and sign for a parcel for us. Okay. Uh, well, I hope you feel better then. I'll catch up with you soon. Right, Cheers then. then. Bye. Oh. Reassembly. Reassembly time. Oh. You go, you go in there. 
you go past there. Under that bit. Now on the top of the fan. Was already there and disturbed that. That's that, that's that. Some screws. That's the one down there. No, it's not. It's just those two. Should be doing some paid work today. But where's the fun in that? Friend in need, it's a bloody nuisance. Right, so we're gonna put our ring back on. Everything connected? I think so. What's my ring? Where's my nice coppery shiny ring gone? There it is. Over the back. Right, so out two and out one. Which one went to out which? I don't know if it's important to connect these things up the right way, but no sense in asking for trouble, I would say. So it goes something like that, I believe. Presumably the polarity is important because I've colour coded these wires. you think they would bother Unless it was important, would you? No, you wouldn't. Click, and another one of those. Ooh, it's going to be awkward. I want to cross thread this. A little dingle. Let's get it going. There we go. Moment of truth getting near. Okay, so we've got to get that on top of there and then get these wires underneath that clip. So let's plug them on first. Ooh, wait, fan is not plugged in. CN2 is the fan, isn't it? Bollocks. Yeah, CN2 is the fan, I plugged that in the wrong one. That's the fan, and the thermistors and what have you, sensors go on there. 
Other way around. Let's put one in first. In you go. Push that down. Don't like those connectors, they are cheap and nasty to be honest. Right, so now we've got to swing this over here and try and hook these wires underneath this clip because I don't suppose it's good having the sensor wires being up near the radiating element. Maybe you can make a microwave version of this to keep women's feet warm in the winter. What do you think? Inductive heating pad for the feet. It's tight to get them out, I remember that. This is not switched on. That's it. No, it's not. That's it now, though. She's in position. Messy there, isn't it? There we are. It's lovely, we've got three screws left, which is correct. Okie dokie. Just going to renew some of the jollop on the top of these things. It looks well dried out actually. So we're going to give it some fresh love juice. To ensure a wholesome connection. a bit hard. don't use this stuff very often. So all that cooking has dried it out. Right. Don't know what I did the cap for at the moment. All connected as far as I can tell. We shall see, won't we? Whether the Viesta is going to give us cause for celebration or a fiesta. That's it, it's in now. What 
Oops, that thing. I'll put a couple of screws in, I think, just to hold that in position. Okay. Okie dokie. So we need some mains, I think. That's what we need. Right, here she is. So I'll just power her up. Put the pan on. Touch the indicator. Probably have to unlock first. There you go, and then we can set the power level to six. Oh, it didn't go bang. Yeah, it's getting hot. Yeah, it's working. Haha, <laughs> we fixed it. Lovely job, eh? Luckily, it didn't blow anything up. So, there we are. That's the uh, trip through. I hope you'll enjoy watching that. Subscribe down in the titty button down there if you're not subscribed. If you are subscribed, thank you very much and leave me a like. So, yeah, see you next time. Turn, what? Something nice has been cooking in that pan. I can smell that. <laughs>